Bill, before we get into um, your, your view of regulation and, and the industry, tell us specifically about ArchBlock. You know, uh, would you separate yourself somehow from other crypto lenders? I know you started, for example, the first you know, institutionally adopted stablecoin. Sure, yeah, so um, we really are two things. You mentioned TrueFi, that is kind of our base layer, open source marketplace for lending. It's a place where someone with a credit perspective can come manage uh, a, a credit strategy and lenders can come lend to it and uh, uh, seekers of capital can come borrow from it. Um, our, our whole orientation started with the stablecoin business that we created as our first product, which was the first institutional grade stablecoin. It's still a, uh, it's true USD. We don't own the economic rights to it, but we manage that on behalf of a, a consortium out of Asia. And, uh, and so th that's what we are. Archblock sits on top of that, and we're building SaaS software to enhance people's ability to run portfolios and access the TrueFi marketplace. So uh, I know that's a bunch of different pieces uh, that we do, but that our orientation comes from our original founding in 2016, which was to be uh, as regulatorily compliant and comply with all the rules that are out there. We just wish there were more and clear rules. So on that point, Bill, what is the biggest regulatory risk that you are facing? Is it just a lack of clarity and general uncertainty? Yeah, it really is that. I mean, uh, so we believe we're compliant with every rule that's been out there and is uh, is uh, been uh, stipulated. Um, what's going on, and obviously what y'all are talking about on this show and uh, is all over uh, the media, is there's a lot of regulatory action going on right now, which is great because it says don't do this, um, but it doesn't give you detailed rules to follow. And that's what we're really waiting for. And we understand why Congress uh, um, is facing a new technology and a new marketplace, and they have to take their time to regulate. But we're encouraging of that and welcoming of it and working with uh, with uh, uh, lobbying associations, et cetera. We're participating in that process. How do you see the evolution of this uh, in terms of big picture, Bill? You know, um, obviously, there's a crackdown by regulators right now. We've seen prices fall dramatically, although uh, uh, we have seen a little rebound of late. Is crypto going to still be the way of the future? Do you still believe that there are use cases um, that, you know, 10 years from now, we we'll find it hard to believe didn't exist, uh, you know, now? That, that is exactly our belief, Matt. We believe that, uh, that fundamentally, uh, there are a lot of great use cases for blockchain technology, but one of the best, if not the best, is the application to the financial markets. Um, and in particular, the niche in which we're playing in, which is asset management on the blockchain. And, and while we hope that the adoption curve is, is not as uh, slow as 10 years, we do believe that in 10 years, you will look back and say, this was totally obvious. And even though there's been a major setback by a lot of players, including ours, uh, as, as risk has gone off and liquidity has gone out of the marketplace, um, there's not as much value uh, in our system or on our platform or on others. Um, we believe that the value proposition is there. And, uh, and you, you just have to look at one thing alone. Instant settlement alone is a huge move forward. Tokenization of funds and assets is a huge uh, move forward from existing technology and the way existing markets work. And we believe that, uh, that that's going to be compelling and that, uh, again, in the look back basis, we'll look back and we'll say, well, it was so obvious this was inevitable. But in the more near term, Bill, can you give us more specifics on how institutional behavior in particular has changed over the course of the last several months? You bet. So what we're seeing, and I'm going to address specifically investors that are on chain looking for investment opportunities on chain. That's that's shifted dramatically. And this is uh, it's parallel to traditional uh, financial markets where risk has gone off and people have gone into more conservative and uh, and uh, and higher quality investments. Uh, but uh, there are still billions of dollars of, of capital that is mandated to stay on chain. A lot of that's in decentralized autonomous organizations or Dow treasuries, but there are also corporates uh, that have treasuries that have to invest on chain. And that capital is looking for much safer, um, uh, still good yielding assets, but things where they can totally understand it, like treasuries. And, and that sounds uh, bizarre and maybe a little bit uh, uh, um, uh, counterintuitive, that treasury uh, products uh, need to be on chain because why can't someone just go through a traditional brokerage account? 
Well, a lot of these investors are mandated to do it directly on chain, and they can't go through a traditional brokerage account. So they're looking to invest in T-bills, treasury bonds, investment-grade debt, and other high-grade, um, high-quality, uh, lower-risk investments, but on chain. And so that's where we think the market is evolving to, and that's what we're endeavoring to provide. And we think that's where the liquidity will, will move towards on our platform and other platforms uh, as they look for that yield, but safer yield. Uh, we think you know risk will come back. The circus always inevitably comes back to town, uh, but it will come back in a much more regulatorily compliant way.